solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as the trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. No, clearly it's a different way of, uh, it's uh, clearly not the capitalist world that uh, the, the, that we're used to. And, and just as a, since you bring it up, even the podcast that I run, I try and use it as a, uh, I tell people, if you find the content of value, then pay it forward to a not-for-profit that I'm working with. So trying to do that in my little way, but, but uh, seeing people like you, it's truly inspiring when you do this at scale in such a, such a systematic way. So thank you. Thank for, you. Thank you for doing that. Um, a related question, Marshall, uh, one of the things that comes up, you know, one of the people I spoke to was Linda Grattan, who's written the book, yes. Life. Um, sure. and, and given that we're going to be working, you know, into our seventies and eighties, and we're going to be living much longer. Uh, one of the questions that leaders come up with or grapple with is how do I stay relevant? You know, uh, whether I'm 40 or 50 or 60, you've been relevant over four decades. Uh, if you had to sort of distill some wisdom around staying relevant, what are some of the things, maybe even you're a great role model in terms of staying relevant and, and the world has changed uh, in terms of, you know, what the world was in terms of the industries, the leadership paradigm to what it is now. So any, uh, any insights there, Marshall? Yeah. I, assuming I'm relevant right now, I've made it to my seventies at least. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> now, let me give you a way to look at life to answer that question. And how to stay relevant, I'm going to use you as an example. Because I like to talk to real people rather than abstractions. Are you ready? Yeah, please. Now, do you go by Deepak? Deepak, yeah. Deepak, okay. Take a deep breath. Take a deeper breath. Now, the good Buddhist principle is this. Every time I take a deep breath, it's a new me. It's a new me. And everything in your life was done by an infinite set of people. Their names were the previous Deepaks, the previous shoes. Close your eyes. I want you to think of all the previous Deepaks. Think of all the gifts they have given to you that's listening to me talk right now. Think about how hard those people tried. Think about all they did to help other people. Open your eyes. Now, if any group of people did that many nice things, what should you say to those nice people? Thank you. Do your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Now, did they make a little mistake or two over the years? Let go. Let go. Now, it, back to your question, moving forward. The Deepak I'm talking to, I'm writing a new book called The Earned Life. The Deepak I'm talking to right now, you haven't earned one thing. You have not, you've earned nothing. Almost everything you have has been inherited. It's a gift from the previous Deepaks. You didn't earn a thing, they did. The guy I'm talking to, you haven't earned anything. Now you have to ask yourself, what is this person gonna earn? What is this person gonna earn moving forward? And Yesterday, I can tell you, I'm a Buddhist. I, I really had the ultimate example of the importance of Buddhism yesterday. I talked to one of the most famous people in the world. Glamorous, good looking, r mega rich, famous. I said on a one to 10 scale, how would you score the, this test on the average day? I did my best to be happy. You know, he said four. 
It's not out there. It's in here. And you also need to think in another way of life. The previous Deepaks were like your parents. Almost everything you have today was created by those people. Those were your parents. Your future Deepaks are your children. What do you want to give to your children? What do you want to give to your children? And the most moving case study of this was my friend, Dr. Jim Kim. He's one of my 100 coaches, and he was president of World Bank. He was head of Partners in Health, and in his life, he's probably saved literally tens of millions of lives. If anybody in the world could say, I can coast, it's him. I told him the story. You know what he said? I hope I can make mommy and daddy proud. hope I can make mommy and daddy proud. Very touchy. Well, to me, every time you take a breath, it's a new you. You can't live in the past. The person I talked to, if you could be happy because of what you achieved, he'd be the happiest person in the world. The other thing is there are literally millions of people who would kill to be this person. For what? And for what? Yeah, millions of dollars and fame and so what? Yeah, so what? And you work in the area of transition. I worked with a lot of CEOs and you can't just play bad golf with old men at the country club and eat chicken sandwiches all day. Mm. You've got to earn you've got to earn respect every day. And not only earn the respect of other people, you need to earn the respect of the person you see in the mirror. And when you stop doing that, you live in the past. And if you look at ex-athletes in the U.S., football, basketball, terrible. Depression, suicide, divorce, bankruptcy. They just collapse. Uh, Michael Phelps, the great Olympic champion, did a movie, I don't know if you saw it, called The Weight of Gold. I haven't actually. I heard about his uh, his struggles with depression some time back, but I haven't seen the movie. Talked about ex-Olympians. Depression, suicide. Why? They, They thought, if I win the Olympic gold medal, that's it. No. You won the Olympic gold medal and billions of people cheered. What happens tomorrow? And if you're not careful, your, your entire identity becomes, a, my father used to say, used to be. Yeah, didn't you used to be Michael Phelps? Didn't you used to be an Olympic champion? Your whole life is your used to be. So I think a great way to look at life is every day we're starting over here. And those people in the past may have done some great things. That wasn't you. Yeah, that pro football player that's sitting there drunk talking about what he did 40 years ago. That guy didn't win the Super Bowl. Some young kid won the Super Bowl. That guy's an old man talking about somebody that won the Super Bowl. Um, Living in the past doesn't work. 